Okay, so let's take a look at how to install Python and PyCharm onto your system, um, as well as how to create your, your first PyCharm project and get things running and so forth. Okay, so it's fairly straightforward. Um, the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to want to go to python.org here, and you'll go to downloads and basically get the latest version of the three uh, Python 3. Okay, so in this case, it's uh, Python 3.6.2. Okay, so you'll click that, you'll go ahead and run the installer. I've already done that. I'm not going to. I'm not going to uh, to go through that. There's really not not much uh, not much to that. Um, the other thing then is we're going to use uh, we're going to use the PyCharm IDE, um, which is a really really good uh, IDE. Um, it's made by JetBrains. JetBrains makes some really awesome IDEs. Um, so you know you'll see we can do what uh, you do download now, um, and then basically you know make sure it should auto select your platform and so forth. Uh, you have two options. There's professional and there's community. Um, so community really is sufficient. That's the one that uh, that I'm recommending you get. If you do want all the bells, buzzers, and horns, um, what you can do is uh, you can go here, this JetBrain slash student, and basically what you'll do is you'll uh, you'll click apply now to get a uh, to get a code um, that basically will allow you to uh, will allow you to use these sort of professional versions for non-commercial purposes, um, and then you could download the professional version and so forth um, as I said so then you're just gonna go ahead and do uh, do download from the community version and again you're gonna run the installer um, and so forth so it should be pretty much a no-brainer once you uh, once you run um, PyCharm um, so here I have it um, a screen that roughly looks like what you should see uh, when you first run it uh, basically you can go to uh, create new project and um, so you'll see essentially it has it, you can pick your location and so forth. So I'm just going to um, call this um, first and uh, it has my, uh, it has my interpreter selected here. Um, and so I'm just going to go ahead and click create. Okay. So that, uh, that opens this up. Let me just kind of resize this so that it will, uh, it will fit uh, on the video here. All right. So there is, a, here's our, our Python project, okay? And essentially all we're gonna do, notice I can try to spin this open, there's, there's actually nothing there. Um, what we want to do is create a brand new file. So if I right click on this, and I go to new, you'll see there's the option for creating a Python file. That's the one that I want. So I can call it, um, I can call it first. I don't even have to put in the .py. Uh, PyCharm will add that automatically for me. Okay, so when I do that, you'll see it basically opens this up, um, creates my, um, now when I spin this open, there's first dot, uh, dot .py. Okay, so here is our, um, our Python, uh, our Python file itself. Okay, and if you navigated to this particular directory, you'd be able to see that along with some additional files, a .idea directory that has the, uh, that has the settings for the project and so forth. Um, so how do we actually use this? Now, the book talks about using basically the basic Python tools for doing all this stuff. Let me show you actually how to do this stuff in, um, in PyCharm. So the first thing that you should note is this part down here that says Python console. If I click that, You'll notice what this is. This is an act. This is an active Python interpreter. So, for instance, I can enter in any Python valid Python code, and it will execute that. It will evaluate it and print out the result right away automatically. Right. So, three plus four equals seven. Um, three times two. Um, I can have a, a string. Um, hello. And I can do string concatenation, okay? And basically, it uh, it concatenates the two strings together, showing that. Um, of course, remember we can also have strings that uh, that use double quotes, etc. Um, and those are basically the same thing. Um, one of the things that's kind of interesting in Python uh, is something like this. So I could do uh, I could take a string and multiply it by a number, um, and I get that many copies of the string. Um, now. Initially, you might look and say, well, how is that useful? It turns out it actually is really useful. For instance, if you wanted to print, say, a separator line, um, it's really easy to do. I could do something like this, um, that times 70, and boom, there's my, uh, there's my little separator. 
Okay. Now I'm, I'm saying printing, but really none of this is actually doing printing. We're just evaluating this directly. If I put those in my program here and ran the program, I wouldn't see it. For instance, notice if I do three plus four um, here, and then I go to run my program. And the way that I run the program, the first time is uh, I can right click on the, uh, on the file and you'll see there's this option for run and the file name, right? You notice I could also do control shift F10. Um, so if I do that, it will actually run my program. Okay. And here's the output of my program, which is nothing. Okay. Why? Because I haven't told Python to actually display this result. Okay. The console is nice in that it evaluates these expressions and then prints out what the, what the value is. Um, in a Python program, however, we have to tell it to do this by using the print function. So I can use print and then uh, we can come back in here and simply go up and say go ahead and run this and you'll see now we have that um, we can add some additional information so i could have the string three plus four equals and then put a comma right so we will print out this and we will print out that three plus four equals seven Okay, so that should give you a basic idea of, uh, of how to create a program, how to run those things. If we have multiple, uh, multiple Python files in here, that's fine. Um, so for instance, if I just created another one, um, other, right? Print hello from, from other. Okay, now if I just go ahead and click run, okay, notice I still see this. Why? Because the run configuration that I've selected here is uh, is for first, and that's the only run configuration we have. If I want to run this one, basically again, just come over here, do run other, and now we see hello from other is displayed. Notice when I click this, we still see hello from other. What if I want to go back to the other one? Easy enough. Just switch over to that and click like so. Okay really really simple very very easy stuff to do okay so that should give you a basic idea of how to do that stuff um and that should get you started for uh, for your first assignment one other thing is if you're in this view and you want to create a new project, um, one thing you could do is you could come here and uh, you could select close project and that would take you back to the, uh, to the page we looked at before. Um, the alternative is uh, just do file new project, right? And then you're basically into the same create, uh, create project dialog and you can create a brand new project uh, like that. If you have any questions and you're in my class, uh, hit me up on Piazza. And if you found us on the internet and have some questions, then post a comment down in the, uh, in the comments field.